fair, accurate, to the point. The 10 o'clock news on KRTV starts right now. Tonight, hitching a ride. How those who abuse the system are upping health care prices, we investigate so-called ambulance freeloaders. Plus, Glacier and the government shutdown. How 16 days in October is impacting the National Park now. And a battle on the field and off. Before they clash on the gridiron, the Cats and Grizz duke it out for the best players in Montana. Thanks for joining us tonight. The changing weather conditions lead off our 10 o'clock news. First, it was temperatures plummeting this afternoon. Now we're talking about snow. Let's turn to storm tracker meteorologist Mike Rollins for the latest. Mike? We are certainly looking at those very cold temperatures out there. It is 9 degrees right now in Vaughan, 10 at the airport in Great Falls, and that is our lowest number since temperatures started falling this afternoon. Dutton checking in with 7 degrees, and it doesn't end there. Check out Conrad, Shoto, both at 9. It's 6 up in Cutbank. The front has made it through Lewistown, Stanford, and Cascade, and it's sort of stuck against the mountains right now, but it will move through the mountains overnight, and we'll see the colder air filter down into the capital. City tomorrow morning. Check out wind chill values. This is what it feels like to your exposed skin. We're looking at wind chill values here near zero and below zero in many locations. We're also keeping an eye on the snow. Starting to see a band of light snow developing here up in northern Montana. This is north of Highway 2 in Phillips and Valley counties. And then also having a couple of reports of light snow here. Great Falls up toward the Conrad area. But I don't expect a ton of snow in the next hour or two. I think later on tonight we'll start to see some bands of snow developing. And that light snow will continue right through the morning commute. I'll show you how much snow will fall where you live coming up in storm tracker weather. Now to a developing story following up on information we brought you yesterday. Great Falls police have told us they have arrested Trevor Bishop. He's the man accused of shooting a 16 year old girl in the leg in Great Falls on Monday. Bishop faces two counts of assault with a weapon and a drug charge. Police tell us they're still investigating and say they could be making more arrests in the case. We'll continue to follow this story. All across the nation, uh, many cities are facing the same major issue, abuse of the 911 system. Great Falls is no exception. Care TV's Tara Grimes goes on special assignment to investigate how those who constantly call on an ambulance can impact your life. 911, where is your emergency? What about? They call them frequent flyers. I'd say it's one of the uh, top issues facing our community, healthcare wise, and uh, certainly. You know, 911 response wise, it's um, one of the top two or three probably. A person who time and time again calls 911 with no real emergency. Perhaps some anxiety. Uh, it could be as simple as being lonely. And it does happen where folks, sometimes someone's really just looking for a meal at the emergency department. While it's unknown exactly how many frequent flyers Cascade County has, emergency services workers say they respond to about three or four a day. And by law, they're not allowed to turn them down. But each time these frequent flyers make a call, they could be putting your health at risk. The more calls like that we're on, there is always the risk of a delayed response to a heart attack or a stroke. As you can see, we've only got so many dispatchers here that can answer lines. And if we've got a dispatcher that's answering a line for somebody who's not having an emergency, that means we've got somebody on hold that truly is having an emergency and can give us either give us information or help us save somebody's life. And they're increasing the cost of health care. Great Falls Emergency Services has a base rate of about $800 to $900 per ambulance ride. And if the patient can't pay, since Great Falls Emergency Services is a private company, the cost shifts to them. And in turn, they could be forced to raise their prices. So what can or should be done? Gross says he and his crew are evaluating an option where a paramedic would visit these frequent flyers every so often. Maybe in the future, where instead of a paramedic 911 ambulance, we have a specially trained paramedic who can look at the big picture with that patient, including the psychosocial issues, the economic situation, and grapple with their, their problem a little bit more aggressively instead of an emergency crew just taking them to the ER. 
Many of these frequent flyers also happen to be intoxicated. Groves says instead of picking them up and taking them to the emergency room to be cared for, he hopes to one day change that. It certainly exists in any number of other cities where some kind of specialized vehicle that can transport them to the facility that's set up to um, give them time to sober up and, and under some medical supervision. And with that, Gross hopes they can get frequent flyers the help they need and keep them out of the ambulance. In Great Falls, Tara Grimes, MTN News. Emergency responders want to strongly reiterate if patients are unsure if they should call 911, it's always better to be safe than sorry. A Montana man accused of kidnapping and assaulting a Wyoming girl in October of last year changed his plea to guilty and was sentenced today. The story leads tonight's Montana Minute. In a Cody, Wyoming courtroom, Jesse Spear was sentenced to life in prison despite a plea agreement in which two of four felony counts were dismissed. Spear abducted and sexually assaulted the girl after forcing her into his vehicle at gunpoint after asking her to look for his lost puppy. He drove to Carter Mountain and sexually assaulted her before leaving her along a mountain road where two hunters picked her up and sought help. After an extensive manhunt in both Wyoming and Montana, Spear was eventually apprehended in Belgrade. A Bozeman man accused of stealing millions of dollars from investors pleads not guilty today to six remaining charges. 52-year-old Richard Reynolds was originally charged with 20 felony crimes, including theft and operating a Ponzi scheme, but 14 were dropped last week because of a recent Montana Supreme Court decision dealing with securities fraud. Court records say Reynolds defrauded more than $5 million from 141 investors. A Boulder man faces several charges in Butte after allegedly threatening family members with a gun and fighting with police early Tuesday. 50-year-old Mark Todd Williams is accused of pointing a handgun at relatives at a residence in what police say was a dispute over inheritance. Police say he resisted arrest and kicked an officer in the knee while being taken into custody. His felony charges include assault with a weapon and assault on a peace officer. Also new at 10 tonight, Montana has replaced the GED test and is moving to a new Montana High School equivalen equivalency exam or high set. The test is the same and consists of the same subjects, but the new test will be cheaper. It will start in January, and even if you have already started on your old test, your scores will be transferred over to the new test come January. It will cost $50, and you're allowed up to two retakes within the same calendar year at no additional cost to you. The superintendent of Public Instruction, Denise Juno, says that the change will allow more people to gain access to the test. It will be offered at half the price the GED would have been offered at. It allows an online option as well as a paper pencil. Um, and so it really is an economic benefit to people who want to get a high school equivalency exam in our, in our state and have that piece of paper that will help them become economically successful. On average, about 3,500 Montanans take the GED. Eight other states have opted to do away with the GED test in favor of the high set. Next year, the last of the baby boomer generation will turn 50 years old. And with that milestone comes a question. Is this group financially ready for retirement. MTN's Claire Anderson spent the day finding out. According to the Senior Center Advocacy Group, AARP, by 2030, one in five U.S. citizens will be over the age of 65. For Montana, that number will be one in four. Especially with the baby boomer generations, uh, you're starting to see a transition towards one of two things. They're either working longer or number two, they are retiring now and maybe taking on a part-time job to help supplement their income. The University of Chicago surveyed 1,000 adults over the age of 50, and almost one half are expecting to retire later than previously thought. Older people that we have coming in, yeah, it's more of a, it's a chaos moment for them because they realize that I don't have enough to save. So we have people that come in that are in their 70s plus that are still working because they don't actually have that money saved. Financial planners say people need to start preparing for retirement early. People are seeing the value in saving that Social Security is not going to supplement their whole income. So they have to set up somewhat of a nest egg for themselves. According to AARP, 92% of Montanans 65 and older are receiving Social Security. On average, that provides just over $14,000 per year for each recipient. And financial advisors say that's not enough. Going forward, I mean, you're, you're going to see costs start to rise. You're going to see people living longer, which people are starting to realize, well, if I live longer, that means I'm going to have to supply income longer. So that means they have to start saving and continue saving longer. So the message is to start saving now so you aren't caught in a bind. 
we have the benefit that we have time to start changing that, whether it's putting, again, 50 bucks a month away or 100 bucks a month away. In Great Falls, Claire Anderson, MTN News. World Dynamics Incorporated offers free financial advice at seven different locations around the state. Well, it's time to check back in uh, with Mike over in the Weather Center. It was windy today, and then all of a sudden you could feel the change. You could feel the change even inside the air temperature right. chart. It's <laughs> changed in the studio at least. And Mike, that's what we call a cold front on a mission. You know, that cold front was on a mission, Shannon. I mean, temperatures were plummeting here. You'd look at the thermometer one minute, and the next minute we're down 10 more degrees. It was incredible. Today, 56 for the high after 2 o'clock. Now, down to 10. The averages are 41 and 22, but not near that record low of 23 below zero. We set back in the 90s. Light snow in the morning, temperatures in the single digits. My complete forecast is next. Reporting you can trust with Tim McGonigal and Shannon Newth. Storm Tracker Weather with Mike Rollins and Richie Melby with Sports. This is the 10 o'clock news on KRTV. Fair, accurate, to the point.